Honorable Ministers, former President of Iceland, Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be here at the Japan Forum of the Arctic Circle. In my mind, the Arctic Circle Forum has a fitting home here in Tokyo. The geographical Arctic Circle may be over 3,000 kilometers north of Tokyo, but Arctic issues concern the rest of the world. We who live in the high north need a dialogue with the Far East. The Arctic discourse needs input from Japan and from Asia. I am happy not only to see the forum taking place, but delighted to see the exciting program we have here and the high-level participation of ministers as well as that of leaders and experts from the fields of science, policy, industry, and civil society. There can be no discussion on the future of the Arctic without considering Asia or without the participation of Asia. As the former chairman of the Arctic Council in 2019 to 2021, I am well aware of the important contribution that Japan and other Asian countries bring to work of the councils as observers. Altogether, five countries in Asia are observers to the Arctic Council. As you all know, the work of the Arctic Council has been on a pause since last year. For reasons we also all know. That makes a forum like this one all the more important because we need a dialogue on the Arctic. Global change is most certainly not on a pause. We need a dialogue on opportunities in the Arctic. The high north is not an icy wilderness. It is a diverse and dynamic region that four million people call home. It's a region of rich history and remarkable cultures a vibrant present and a promising future. Retreating ice means increased access to many valuable resources. One or two decades ago, this would have been a nod to hide hydrocarbons. Not so much now. It is wise to keep hydrocarbons in the ground for a long time. But we should get excited about new discoveries of rare earth minerals in Arctic regions, which we need to build a greener future. Tourism is growing with cruise ships sailing ever further north. And of course, there is the promise of sea routes through the Arctic Ocean, opening up a shortcut between East Asia and the Atlantic world. Actually, the distance will shorten by 40%. We need a dialogue on the challenges faced by the Arctic. They are manifold and complex, as in any region of the world. But the most obvious one is climate change and its vast impacts on the icy realms of the North. The very visible retreat of ice in the Arctic was perhaps the earliest sign that climate change was not some science fiction, but a present reality. The shrinking of ice shows no signs of abating, as we will explore in this forum. Later this year, we will have the first global stock take of the Paris Agreement on cutting carbon emissions taking place at COP28 in the United Arab Emirates. The thawing Arctic will loom large in the stock take 
in the desert heat as we search for ways to avert a climate catastrophe. And we should have a dialogue on Arctic cooperation and the lessons it contains for the wider world. A true pan-Arctic dialogue is actually a rather recent phenomenon. In the past, we in the Arctic were separated by vast distances with the lines of communication mainly running north-south. For decades, we were frozen in an east-west conflict. Then we had the thaw of the positive diplomatic kind. We now have lively communication and cooperation in just about every field, science, business, environmental protection, law, politics. The rich agenda here at the Tokyo Forum speaks for itself. This dialogue fosters understanding, trade, progress, and dare I say, in these troubled times, peace. The present conflict in Europe, this horrific invasion of Ukraine by Russia, is despite our efforts of communication, not because of them. I am convinced that the Arctic model of cooperation has lessons for other regions in the world. We want the Arctic to stay as a low tension, peaceful region for the rest of time. I am also convinced that we will have a lively, a fruitful discussion here in the next few days. In these nice settings in this marvelous city, I would like to thank Sasa Kava Peace Foundation and the Nippon Foundation for the support for this forum and to everyone involved in its organization. I look forward to good discussion here. Thank you.